It's the mummified figure of a woman. She sits on a wooden chair, and in the Christian world, she is known as Marie, the Elector of Jesus. And her story is truly extraordinary. She was named Mary Elector. Elector means chosen one. And it probably points to the fact that the officials who gave the name must have perceived her as special in some way. Even in her childhood, Marie was called the Holy Child. Many considered her one of the greatest mystics of her time. A saint is a person who, during their lifetime, was close to God in some extraordinary way, and people around them somehow perceive that God's holiness, God's goodness, God's beauty, or God's courage was manifested in them. After the death of her father, to whom she had a very strong attachment, Marie Elector was so shaken that in her deep grief, she was able to bring herself to a quite extraordinary state of consciousness. She reportedly heard the voice of God comforting her with the words, do not be afraid. From now on, I will be your father. We knew that Mother Electa was greeted on her arrival in Prague by enthusiastic crowds of Prague citizens who already knew about her and regarded her as a saint. In the monastic silence, solitude, contemplation and deprivation of the individual senses, she may have been able to connect with God repeatedly. Her spiritual growth was utterly unique. Before she died, she had her diary burned. Why she did so, we can only guess. What has survived are a few letters from confessors or spiritual directors, and these reveal the great depth and uh, intensity of her spiritual life. On January the 14th, 1663, there was reportedly a big frost and a mortar froze. Perhaps this is why the Masons used boiling water to bury Maria Lecter in the tomb cavity. The water flowed not only into the grave, but also into the coffin. No one knew about the use of impregnating and preserving agents in the treatment of the body of the deceased before burial. No mention of mummification was found anywhere. There was a strange glow coming from the tomb, and even strange voices were heard in the monastery. One nun went to the tomb to relieve her headache. It seemed to her that Marie Elector had gained the power of healing after death. Miracles began to happen, and this led to a quite unique decision for that time. Three years after the burial of Prioress Marie Elector, more precisely on the 14th of January, 1666, the new Mother Superior, Ephrasia of Jesus, gave her consent to open the tomb. Surviving written testimonies confirm that one of the reasons for this unusual decision was the extremely strong smell of violets around Elector's grave, although none grew there. After the three nuns had re-excavated the grave and uncovered the lid of the coffin, a shocking revelation was made. The body was found to be intact, so a medical board was convened. These were the most accomplished physicians of the time, and they confirmed the intactness of the body and described it as a miraculous and beyond all power. The, uh, the preservation of the body is, is a proof of holiness because it's as a result of sins that the, the body decays. The cases of such preserved bodies are known mainly from the so-called Christian environment. Some Roman martyrs were preserved in this way. It is not entirely about saints or people from church circles. Of course, even the non-decomposing bodies were of a different concern. Fears of vampires and so on, but in this case, it's a higher layer of spirituality, somewhere elevated above that. Her body was exhumed and examined by experts for 14 years. It may be that even after death, the person bears signs of divine proximity or a certain divine action, and that the body does not decay and uh, remains preserved. 
It is a miracle. It is the same as the case of St. Cecilia in the Trastevere when it was dug up. What's a miracle anyway, right? It's actually when many causes, physical and otherwise, come together at a single point, in a single sort of node. And suddenly something happens that doesn't normally happen. The commission wrote a report, still preserved today, which states only one thing. In 2003, under the guidance of Dr. Emmanuel Vulcet, the body of Marie Elector was further examined, and even then they confirmed in their report that the phenomenon was extremely remarkable and rare. Um, Elector was a prominent Carmelite nun. She was an intellectual, but she also lived a rich, contemplative life, and that was the reason for the preservation of the body. Little known, for example, that she suffered terrible pain for 30 years. She had severe cirrhosis of the liver and other illnesses. But she, through the power of her faith, was able to somehow rise above her body, above the pain, that she tuned into that inner strength, which she then turned outwards. That's actually how that energy can be transmitted. Today, Maria Lecter's body is mobile at the shoulder, elbow, and knee joints. Maria Lecter is sitting in a chair without support. People can still come to admire her well-preserved body and ask the Carmelite for intervention. We um, keep in our archives hundreds of testimonies of people who say that they have experienced or are experiencing the help of Mother Elector, whether in uh, health, uh, work, housing or uh, relationships. I prayed to Mary Elector for help and the surgery went well. And although my platelet count still wasn't up to normal, it was half of the lower end of normal. I've been taken off medication and just keep going for checkups. It's been over five years. Believers claim that miracles still happen today through her intervention. When you love God, miracles can happen. And Maria Lecter is said to have been one who was in close communion with God. I've always been listened to. Mary Lecter asked me to fast and pray. Thank you very much. It will be possible to visit Mother Electa and pray with her in the space that will be created under the church in the crypt. We're planning to build a museum here. If everything goes well, it will be in 2024. Was Maria Electa a spiritual being with quite extraordinary abilities? It is not only for Marie Electa that a new church will be built in Drasti, near Prague. There is another mystery connected to the Carmelites, which attracts hundreds of thousands of believers every year. The world knows it as Bambino di Praga. The wax statue of the child was donated to the Carmelite Church of Our Lady of Victory by Polixena of Lobkowitz. So, of course, the story is shrouded in mystery of the unknown. The fact that Jesus began to be portrayed as a child is, I think, connected with the beginning of the second millennium. There would have been nothing strange about a seemingly ordinary gift of mysterious and unexplained origin from an Orthodox Catholic if the statue of Jesus had not been accompanied by the reputation of something miraculous. For myself, it's a bit of a mystery how baby Jesus became so famous around the world. You'd think it would be an ordinary statue. I think of it as two things. One, the statue is really artistically valuable. And the second, for these people, at least as I see it, is they experience something that I would describe as a loss of fear of God here. They see God depicted as a little child. The Bambino di Praga arrived at the temple from Spain and over the centuries has gained a reputation in many ways similar to that of the French lords, the Portuguese Fatima or the Bosnian Medjugorje. We came to thank the baby Jesus for the arrival of our son Sebastian, who was born when we were 41 years old and after we had been told we could no longer have children. Thank you, Jacqueline, Hermes and Sebastian from Costa Rica. The baby Jesus is not miraculous itself. Uh, Christ actually works through it. It is a kind of door to heaven. 
The baby Jesus is something extraordinary. Not like a warrior of God, but a defenseless child is the ultimate power. Enough people here have experienced such a settlement. Many people come here as childless married couples and ask for the gift of a child. And we have documented many cases where this has been successful. Thousands of people came to the statue to pray, to ask for a miracle, for a cure, and other benefits. In May 2012, we came here to pray for the blessing of a child. Our prayers were answered with the birth of our daughter, Anna. She came with us to Prague for the second time to thank the child Jesus for this grace. Anna is our greatest blessing from God. William, Heidi, and Anna Kelly from USA 2019. People were here to pray, to bow, and then to testify that they'd been healed from some incurable disease when the doctors weren't giving them much of a chance, when it looked hopeless. Whatever cancer it was. Our son Johan had a very serious accident when he was five years old, and it was very likely that he would die. It was baby Jesus who saved him. The Ballesteros Castillas family from Paraguay, 2019. Bambino di Praga was to miraculously heal countless people and save the old town of Prague from the Swedish sack in 1639. But miracles are still happening today thanks to the Bambino di Praga. Tragically, a ship carrying oil was wrecked off Genoa. There was great concern that the oil would leak and cause a big fire. In the end, the tanker sank without the oil escaping. People considered it an answered prayer to the baby Jesus. And then they bought a statue from the baby Jesus on the tanker. The statue has been copied countless times, and you can find more or less faithful copies of it in all parts of the world. The dress is seen as an expression of respect for the statue. They started to be collected here from different donors, and that's why they started to be revered. The infant Jesus has become an important part of the church, and today has over 250 vestments and dresses according to the liturgical feasts. I like him best when he's not wearing a dress. At Christmas, for example, we leave him without fancy clothes. Fulfilling the wishes of the faithful, the miracles associated with the infant Jesus were eventually noticed by Pope Benedict XVI, who personally gave him a golden crown, and the baby Jesus has his own personal prayer. So we can look behind the altar. It's a really beautiful place. For me, it's the most beautiful place in the church. It's where we come together as a community for prayer and meditation. When I pray, I don't say anything or I don't pray to anything. The contemplation, it is for the inner free space. And that is what I perceive as an encounter with God. It's something liberating. What's above also has a world underneath. Not everyone knows what mysterious things lie beneath the church of Our Lady of Victory. Graves and other mummies. These are images unknown to the crowds waiting for a miracle. Prague hides so many secrets.